Welcome to the world of probiotic foods. This is Cultured Food Life with your host, Donna Schwenk. Welcome, everybody, and thanks for joining me again for another weekly podcast. And this week, we're going to talk about asthma and fermented foods or cultured foods, as I like to call them. Both of them mean the same thing. And this was, oh my gosh, 18 years ago. When I first started Cultured Foods, the very first person I ever told about Cultured Foods was a good friend, and she had a little boy with asthma. And I remember that day, um, we were sitting around the table, and my um, but my little girl was either in a dance class or a drama class, I can't remember which it was. Holly was really, really young. Uh, she was, gosh, I can't remember, six or seven And uh, my friend was sitting at, we were kind of sitting around a table, we were waiting for the kids, and her little boy was there in between classes, and he was um, coughing really, really badly. And he was coughing so bad, I thought he was going to lose his lung. Um, I mean, it was bad. And she told me he had asthma, and it, uh, it really broke my heart, because I couldn't stand to see how hard he was coughing how much he was struggling, and um, I had kind of decided I wasn't going to tell people about cultured foods because I uh, kind of had gotten a little bit of negative feedback from people. They thought I was crazy about these foods that I would sit on my counter and ferment, which is uh, you know a no-no when you're doing regular foods, but fermented foods are very different. And so I decided I kind of wasn't going to tell anybody. But when I saw that little boy, and he was so sick, he was coughing so bad, I just kind of broke. And um, I decided to tell her about it. And I thought maybe it would help him. And I didn't even know if it would help him. But it had done so many miraculous things for me and my family that I decided I was going to talk to her about it. Well, she was very, very receptive to it. And she and I gave her some kefir grains. And she started making and drinking a kefir smoothie every day um, and gave it to her little boy. And I think it was like a month and a month and a half. I can't remember for sure. Um, But he quit using his asthma inhaler. He got better and better until he didn't need his asthma inhaler anymore. And I was really surprised by this and thrilled that it worked so rapidly. And so is she. And she started doing research about it. And she discovered all this information about how certain bacteria in your gut support your immune system, especially when you're young. And when you're first, you know, establishing that basis of good bacteria in your gut when you're a young child and a young infant, your body sets these things up for you. And if you don't have the right ones, um, you you struggle. You get these autoimmune diseases, things like asthma and things like that. But there wasn't a whole lot of research, but she actually found some research to support it. And so after he had been consuming kefir regularly, uh, he really just stopped needing his inhaler and... I can. I remember he was playing sports and he was so excited because he didn't have any trouble when he was playing, I think it was soccer. And um, this went on for about six to nine months. And I think it was in the summer. We, I think he did it in the like September. And then that summer, his mom kind of stopped giving him kefir for like a month, I think. Three weeks to a month. And one day, after about a month of not having kefir, she woke up and she found her little boy standing in front of the refrigerator. He was seven years old with big old tears rolling down his cheeks. And he said, Mom, I feel my asthma coming back. I need my kefir. You stop giving me my kefir and it's coming back. And he was crying. And uh, it was it was really something to behold. That little boy knew that that kefir had made him well. And he knew that he hadn't been taking it. And uh, as soon as he started taking it again, all the symptoms went away. And it's really uh, such an interesting thing. There's more and more research on it now. It really is a very anti-inflammatory food. It really helps in so many different ways. And um, the American Journal of Epidemiology tied asthma to the consumption of antibiotics. And in this study, they found that when doctors gave young children antibiotics, their risk of developing asthma before the age of six six increased by 50%. And in another study, researchers in the UK led by allergist Aidan Kosovic analyzed data for more than 1,000 children from birth until the age of 11 
They looked at their medical records to determine how often doctors gave them antibiotics and how often they ended up with asthma. And he said, we noted significantly higher risk of physician-confirmed wheezing after antibiotic prescriptions. And there was a 70% increased risk of any kind of asthma after the use of antibiotics. So this speaks to the connection between healthy gut bacteria and the occurrence of asthma. Um, Another thing that's really interesting is that um, asthma has been linked to the hygiene hypothesis. Asthma can result when the immune system does not develop properly. Some people believe this can be caused if a growing baby is not exposed to enough varied bacteria. With antibiotics and cesarean births happening more and more, babies don't get that diversity of good bacteria they need to build up a healthy immune system. And I see that a lot. Uh, You know how they always say that kids that grow up on farms are healthier? Well, I think it's because of the diversity of bacteria that they get and are around exposed to. That's how your immune system develops. And it's it's a very interesting thing. Um, As you get exposed to things, not only does it allow you to grow and uh, allow your bacteria to change and grow, it helps your immune system to develop in a stronger way. Now, the Canadian Healthy Infant Infant Development Study was carried out at five different universities and hospitals. They studied asthma and gut bacteria in infants, and researchers selected groups of children at different levels of asthma risk and analyzed their stool samples, which had been taken at three months and at one year of age. They looked at the composition of their gut bacteria, and in the children had different asthma risk levels, And they analyzed how the children's digestion worked and what what specific bacteria they had in their guts. So the researchers selected 319 children who both had allergic reactions, which, you know, they tested with the skin pricks, and wheezing at age one. And then the children with allergic reactions had a much higher chance than those without those conditions of being diagnosed with asthma by age five. The researchers used DNA analysis to identify bacteria in the stool samples and looked for the differences in the bacteria present between the groups at the highest and lowest risk of asthma. And after analyzing the bacteria in the gut, they wanted to see the difference in bacteria and what they were linked to in the way the children's digestive systems worked. They found 22 children who had both allergic reactions and wheezing by age one, And these children had similar amounts and species of bacteria in their stool samples compared with other children who did not have allergic reactions. And they also found that their levels of four different types of bacteria were much lower compared to children at the low asthma risk. Babies who were both allergic and had reactions and had wheezing at age one were also more likely by age three to either have been diagnosed with asthma or be at a higher risk of having reoccurrent wheezing episodes. And then there was a Dr. Benjamin Marshland from the University of Lucerne in Switzerland stated, for a number of years, exposed to micros has been linked with protection against asthma. A classic example is growing up on a farm and drinking raw milk, he said. And he also said previous research was showing up with mounting roles for diet and microbes, and the first year of life they found was key. He also added, this new study adds weights to the observation and supports the concept that there are certain developmental windows in early life where it's really important to get the right signals. And a common factor in all these studies so far has been the microbiome. In fact, Babies have those right guts at the right time might be the best step towards preventing asthma and allergies. And I've seen that too. Um, Laying a good foundation of good bacteria when you're born is so crucial. I saw that in my own kids. Um, My third third child um, got those good bacteria when she was, uh, after she was born. That's when I discovered cultured foods. I found them to help her. My older two kids didn't get that. Holly has never really been to the doctor because she was sick, and yet she was born eight weeks premature. And it was because of all those issues I had with her that I found cultured foods after she was born. Started giving it to her, I think it was at nine months of age. And um, I started consuming them. 
And she went from being, you know, kind of a little sickly kid to a kid that just thrived and never went to the doctor. She never had ear infections. She never had antibiotics. She never had any of those things. And now she's 18. Whereas my other two older kids who are in their kids are in their 30s, they had multiple ear infections, content, countless antibiotics throughout their life. And uh, I really, I can see the difference. It's dramatic. Um, Holly has done really, really well. I mean, she really has never gone to the doctor because she was sick. She's just healthy. And uh, I really believe that foundation that was set at birth made all the difference for her. Even though she came into the world struggling more than my two older children because she was premature. And they also told me that she had a weakened immune system because she didn't get my immunities the last six weeks in the womb because she was born at eight weeks early. So this is really a testament to the bacteria that lays that foundation at birth that really supports our bodies and keeps our immune system strong. For many years, I've received many, many emails and have witnessed many friends find relief from food allergies and from asthma with the consumption of kefir and cultured veggies. Those seem to be the two big ones that seem to help asthma the most. And in the early days of making cultured food, I remember this day. It was funny. I was in, uh, I think it was Whole Foods. I ran into a woman who had come to one of my classes and she was in Whole Foods and she was just over the moon to tell me that her husband no longer needed his asthma inhaler after 15 years. And he had kefir every day and they credited kefir with changing whatever it was in his body to allow him to be inhaler free. And she was a believer in the power of these foods that work like medicine, she said. So kefir is really interesting because Kefir is what helped my friend. And one study showed that the anti-inflammatory and anti-allergic effects of kefir in a mouse asthma model was very significant in suppressing the induced airway hyper-responsiveness to inhaled methacholine. And this is used as a test to determine whether you have asthma. It is a drug um, that is, causes wheezing and shortness of breath. And what they found was kefir significantly inhibited the increase in the total inflammatory cell count that was induced. And they also found that the lung that was stressed, that was distressed because of the drug, returned to normal rather quickly. So kefir has shown anti-inflammatory and anti-allergic effects in these studies, and it may be used as a new therapy potential for the treatment of uh, you know bronchial asthma. And it's interesting um, because I've seen this with so many, many people who have written me or have come to my classes and have told me the same thing over and over again, that they quit using their inhalers because of these, of kefir or cultured vegetables. And, um, I have the, I have all the studies on the article on my website and I'll put that in the link description below. Um, if you want to take a look at that and you can also read the article again, if you'd rather read than listen. Now, let, let me talk to you about kimchi. Um, there was a team of researchers headed by Professor Cha young so at the Department of Food and Science Nutrition, um, and he in Chokobuk National University, and he analyzed 590 kimchi-related papers. And he found that kimchi, one of Korea's major fermented foods, was very helpful in preventing allergic diseases such as dermatitis and asthma. And people who consumed more than 40 grams of kimchi a day had a lower asthma prevalence rate. And in the 17 papers which studied kimchi health benefits for human beings, it was revealed that the more one eats fermented kimchi, the more health benefit it offers. It, the main bacteria in cultured veggies is Lactobacillus planetarum, which has many, many health benefits beyond just asthma. Um, and I've even written an article called Seven Reasons I Eat Culture Vegetables, which if you check the link description below on the article, you'll see that link. Um, I encourage you to check it out because it's quite impressive, um, all of the wonderful things that this these cultured vegetables can do. One of my readers emailed me to tell me that the juice from cultured vegetables stopped an asthma track dead in its tracks. She said that one afternoon she found herself having an asthma attack from a windstorm and she had no inhaler to help her. But luckily, she had just happened to have a cooler in her car with a jar of cultured veggies. So she opened her, her door and got out those veggies, and she swigged the juice down as best she could since her airways were starting to close already. And lo and behold, it worked. 
her airways opened up and she could breathe clearly again without using an inhaler. And um, I've had several people tell me that this has stopped an, an asthma attack dead in its tracks. And it is, I didn't know it could do that, which is really exciting because there's so many properties in these cultured vegetables that we don't really know about and that we're learning more and more about. I have another story. Um, her name is Nicole Neville and she's on my lives touch page. And you can see that at culturedfoodlife.com. Just hit the button on the menu bar that says lies touched. And this is her story. This is from Nicole. Debilitating tiredness, getting much, much better. Severe asthma symptoms are all gone. Cravings for carbs and sweets, gone. I've been drinking kefir and kombucha on a daily basis for three short weeks. I didn't think I'd have this much energy and focus since I was a young child. I was diagnosed with Graves' disease, which is a thyroid disease, over 25 years ago. I've struggled with debilitating tiredness, brain fog, and depression due to never feeling well for almost 25 years. I was able to overcome depression about six months ago. However, since I've adopted probiotic foods in my daily diet, my energy has increased, my focus is better, my, mood can, my moods continue to elevate. About 15 years ago, I couldn't breathe very well and finally went to the doctor. I was diagnosed with asthma, which was so severe, the doctor said I should have gone to the emergency room. That day, I was scared for my life, and that was the day I started taking inhalers, purchase a nebulizer, which is very expensive, and I take allergy medicine. About six and a half years ago, I got two chinchillas, Ruby and Daisy, and found out that I was highly allergic to the hay they ate, as well as the dust they needed to roll around in once a week. I had to turn my office into a playroom because I had terrible time breathing, which forced me to use an inhaler every day. I actually had to buy a face mask respirator to give them their bath and cleaning their bed, vacuum, etc., which still didn't protect my lungs 100%, but it helped. A few days ago, I came out of my chichilla's room after sitting on the floor playing with Ruby and Daisy for 30 minutes. The, that was the moment I realized that I had, didn't have one asthmatic allergy symptom and didn't need my inhaler. It blew my mind. Usually, if I just step into the room to do something, let alone let them jump all over me, I, I couldn't breathe, my mouth and throat would close, and my eyes would itch horribly. You had to pick my jaw off the floor because I couldn't believe I could breathe perfectly well and had zero itchiness. Don, I'll be forever grateful to you that you've come into my life and go down to the abyss so that you could heal yourself, your family, and ultimately help millions of other people too. You have changed my life in three short weeks, and God bless you. So these foods astonish me every day and what they can do. Um, and if you could read my emails and hear my stories, you'd believe it too. I first started eating them because they made me and my family well. And what has you know transpired these last 18 years has continued to amaze and excite me. It's, it's just been such an exciting journey because I've learned so much. Research has caught up with what uh, the things that I was seeing. And I just... I love that probiotic foods give your body the many needed bacteria that they need. And often we don't even know what we need, but they seem to supply them since there's, you know, 50 plus different good bacteria in kefir and several more in cultured vegetables and in kombucha and all of these foods have their own special bacteria. Fruits and veggies are the prebiotics that make all of our microbes grow and flourish and really help them to balance the things in our gut, to, to get to remove the pathogens and allow our good bacteria to kind of take over and dominate. And, you know, all of these microbes were placed in you and all around you for a reason. And they can do so many things that you cannot do for yourself, but they do for you. And on this article, if you want to go to my website and read the article, I'll attach it at the bottom. I'll give you a link so you can read it. I have a lot of, of my favorite recipes for kefir and kimchi that um, many of these people that have told me that they've gotten rid of their asthma inhalers have you been using. And they've been using many others too, but these are some of my favorite. So if you'd like to take a look at them um, and check it out and see, you know, they're super easy to make. It's super fun. Kefir's a blast to make. You just literally put, you know, whatever kind of milk or non-dairy milk you want to put in a jar and you put your kefir culture in, you put a lid on it, you know, sit on your counter for 24 hours and you got kefir. And honest to goodness, you can drink it plain or you can make a smoothie out of it. Uh, we've had some power outages at our house for the last couple of days. And I went to great <laughs> I went to Great Lakes to get a key for smoothie one morning. My husband had a generator hooked in and the 
my high speed blender uses a lot of power. So I took it outside, hooked it up to the generator instead of using the cord that came into the house and made myself a kefir smoothie because I didn't have one the day before. And we have these Santa Ana winds here in California that are blowing through. And there, there's something out there that's bothering me. And it kind of has been making me cough a little bit. There's something only if I go outside. So there's something out there. Well, I hadn't had kefir for two days because our power's been out. And uh, we had some wildfires really close to my home here. So the air quality is all messed up. And I noticed a huge difference after two days with no kefir. So I went outside. I uh, made my smoothie within my blender outside with my generator. And I'm like, I'm having this. I actually had it twice. And uh, I just, I don't go very often without it. And it's already calmed down. I was able to do this whole co- this whole podcast without coughing. And uh, there's something out there that was bothering me. I don't know what it is blowing around, but it's blowing a gale out there. And we've had some fires and stuff, but Kiefer has calmed that all down for me. So I thought I would do this podcast because I'm grateful that I have not only great firefighters and a great community of people where even though we got evacuated for a little bit, um, they were able to stop the fires and they can't stop the Santa Ana winds from blowing. Uh, but I'm thankful that there's such a good community of people and that there's things in my life like Kiefer that can make all the difference for me. And uh, I don't just, I'm not just talking about this stuff because it, you know, it's my business and what I do. I really do live it, guys. Um, and when I get in trouble, I reach for these foods because they work for me like a medicine would. And so this morning I had my smoothie. I put cherries, frozen cherries in it, and I had some kale. And I uh, I put some pre-bio plus in it, which helps feed the good bacteria. And I felt good as new. So those are just some of the personal things that have happened to me. Um, it's really funny because you would think I would know all there is to know. But as I've you know, been on this 18-year journey with these foods, I continue to learn new things all the time. And then again and again, they they have helped me with things in my life when I've struggled or it's just a real comfort to me to have these, you know, wonderful foods. Because kefir you can make without refrigeration. So I really like that because we didn't have any power for a while. But um, it's it's just something I thought I would share with you. So give it a try. Take a look. Uh, head on over to my website at culturefoodlife.com and you can check out the recipes. You know, you can, uh, I've got all my podcasts on all different channels you can listen to. Um, if you'd like to read the article and see some of the recipes, head on over there. And uh, you can type in asthma, it'll come up. It should be right there on the front screen, on the front page, homepage. So anyway, I hope you stay well. I hope you stay healthy. I hope you feed your good bacteria. I hope you don't take them for granted because they're taking care of you, whether you know it or not. And uh, when you pay a little bit of attention to them, you really thrive. So have a wonderful week, guys, and we will see you next Tuesday.